Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. As we look at or prepare to look at discerning God's will, I'm going to continue to look at desolation so that we have a good sense of what of what is not God's will, of when we are moving away from God's deep desires for our lives. Desolation may also be a time of boredom and apathy. Apathy is, is a very destructive attitude. It places us in the position of not caring enough to be in relationship with people, let alone love them. When people have strong feelings, even hate, they are alive and they can be drawn towards God to allow God to do what he needs them to do for the person to heal. But if a person is apathetic, then there is simply no engagement and there's no relationship. When we are in a place of apathy, we do not even desire to be close to God. We lose the desire to pray, the desire to go to church. We just lose interest. The author of this book, upon which these reflections are based, recalls a time when he went to spiritual direction and the spiritual director asked him if he desired or if he had a strong desire to be with God. And he thought that was a stupid question because, after all, he was at the seminary. Surely he did have a desire to be with God. And so he hummed and hawed about it. And eventually he summed up the courage to say, No, I do not have a desire to be with God. And his spiritual director said, Good. Now we can begin working. And so it's that place of being able to engage with the reality of our lives, to step out of our apathy and really acknowledge what is happening inside of us. One of God's most persistent commands is not about sex or violence, but rather the command to not be afraid. It seems that fear is often the biggest obstacle to us doing God's will. Fear keeps Herod from welcoming the Christ child. Fear keeps Nicodemus from following Christ in the light of day. Fear keeps the Pharisees from being open with Jesus. Fear keeps Peter from walking on the water and fear leads the apostles to abandon Jesus when he is arrested. And fear keeps Peter from admitting his friendship with Jesus. More often than we would like to admit, fear is the motivation behind our actions. We fear losing friends. We fear losing our jobs. We fear getting hurt or failing. We fear disappointing others. We fear facing the truth. We fear our bosses, our neighbours, our leaders, and sometimes even our friends and family. We also fear ourselves and we fear the strong emotions that we might have or our secret desires. Fear is then the true motivation behind our actions or our inaction quite often. But fear is not of God. It is not of the true spirit. When we are full of fear, We are not focused on God. We are rather preoccupied by the 
imagined ideas of impending doom. We become convinced that just around the corner there's going to be something bad or happen to us. Anger is often a mask for fear. When we are angry, we should ask, in what way do I feel threatened? And we will learn the true source of our anger. Not all fear is bad. Healthy fear makes me want to lock the door or keep my mouth shut. It is irrational fear which is the work of the false spirit. But sometimes even rational fear can become the driver of our lives. Joseph was right to be afraid of the response of his community to the announcement of Mary's pregnancy. Sometimes God calls us to do genuinely frightening things. But we can choose not to be led by fear. We can choose to act boldly, trusting that God will care for those who follow his will. And sometimes we can come into a place of false consolation which is also a form of desolation. And this is when we are drawn to feelings and thoughts and motives which look good, which look holy, but actually lead us away from God, lead us away from his calling for our lives. So in this case, we choose to do things because they look like God's will but they may not necessarily be God's will. There was a story of a number of people who would gather on a Sunday morning for mass and they didn't have a they didn't have a clock in the town so they weren't really sure when they needed to gather. And so very often they would be early so th- is to be sure not to miss the Mass. So because they were early, they would spend time talking to one another as they waited for Mass to begin. It was a time of community building. It was a time of fellowship. Then one day, a wealthy businessman donated a clock to the town. And from that day on, everybody arrived on time for Mass. And there was no gathering of the people prior to Mass. And so what appeared to be something good turned out to work against the workings of God in that community. And that's the sense we have of false consolation when we think we're doing something good but in fact it isn't aiding the work of God in his kingdom. God calls us but not to do everything. We have to discern what we are called to do and that is a very important part of discerning the will of God. Because sometimes we can be caught up in saying yes to everything that comes our way. But is that really what God is calling us to do? Let us pray. Father, there are times when we know that we allow fear to dictate our decisions. We know there are times when we become apathetic and have just no desire to pray or to attend church. And then we know there are times when we try to do too much. Help us to recognize that these are not movements of your spirit. Amen. 
Amen.